If you're overwhelmed by Mercedes-Benz's SUV lineup, trust me, you're not alone. Including the crossover coupe variants and the infamous G-Wagon, there are nine different models that the company offers. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on the two babies in the family. That's the GLA and the GLB. Now, these cars are similar in size, they're similar in price, and the interiors are similar as well. However, they're not exact clones of each other. So if you're shopping between the two, we're here to show you the differences. We have two AMG 35 models, which is the upgraded engine package. We'll talk about that in a bit. We should also know that Mercedes offers an entry-level GLA 250 and GLB 250. The GLA 250 starts at $36,320, and the slightly bigger GLB 250 starts at $38,050. Now, even though we have the faster AMG versions, the interior space, the cargo space, that's all the exact same. So let's start with the GLA. What a cute little thing, right? This is the second generation of the car, and man, it is quite the glow up between the two. The first gen car was the right size, but it just had none of the charm that this car offers at all. Mercedes doesn't offer the A35 hatchback in America, so this is actually the closest thing you're gonna get to a hot hatch with a three-pointed star in the front of the car. Which leads me to my first design point. It's not all that hot looking. I mean, for being an AMG and having 300 horsepower, you would hardly know that this little thing is quick. The car is spec in night black paint, which is both a really boring name and a no-cost option. There are 20-inch five-spoke wheels, which add a little bit of spice, and those are a reasonable $750. I'm calling it, this is actually a total sleeper car. From a size perspective, the GLA is 174 inches long and 62 inches tall. So for being an SUV, it's really not all that big. A Subaru Crosstrek, which is another compact crossover, is only one inch taller for reference. Follow me around back so I can show you some of my favorite design details back here. Now, this is the AMG version, so you get one AMG badge. This is something of a spoiler up here to make it a little spicier. And the two tailpipes in the back are different. But other than that, it's a very restrained design language and looks very similar to the GLA 250. In the trunk, you're dealing with 15.4 cubic feet of cargo space. When we go over to the GLB in a bit, you'll see that's where it has a huge advantage. There's over 10 cubes more of space in the trunk. So let's talk backseat space in the GLA for just a second. Back here, we're dealing with 38 inches of legroom and 38 inches of headroom as well. I'm five foot eight, I'm not the world's tallest person, but if you're six one, six two, you could still fit back here without an issue. Uh, I will say that this car is missing a panoramic sunroof option, and that would certainly brighten things up, make it seem slightly less claustrophobic. That said, there are two rear seat air vents, which makes it a lot more livable. The front seat of the two cars looks pretty much identical, and that's because it is. So in this car, we're gonna focus on the infotainment that they share. There are twin 10.3 inch displays. This one's a touchscreen, and this one's not. Uh, it pairs with this little touchpad system down here, which we've come to get used to with MBUX systems. I still don't like it as much as the clicky wheel that was with the command system prior, uh, but it's still pretty easy to use overall. MBUX is an absolute joy. The, the menus are very clear. It's very easy to get from place to place. The screen is super easy to interact with. And overall, this is a really advanced looking tech setup for a car of this size. It impresses people when you get inside of the cabin. Before we step inside of the GLB, let's just take a second to appreciate how good this thing looks on the outside. You might remember the GLK from a few years ago. It was sort of this funky, uh, weirdo looking crossover, but it had this charm to it. This is a wonderful modern day continuation of that design language. It's a squared off little nugget, and I just love the way they designed it. With this particular car, it's worth mentioning that unlike the GLA, this looks like a proper AMG. That mostly has to do with the $750 night package, which adds gloss black accents to the mirrors, grill surround, window trim, and exhausts. The GLB is 183 inches long, or nine inches longer than the GLA, and it's about three inches taller too. As mentioned earlier, cargo space is much better here at 27 cubic feet of space. And although this car doesn't have it, the GLB actually has an optional third row of seats. It's the smallest three row SUV on sale today. Boring? exciting AMG. So look at the difference between these two wheel options and how much more aggressive the GLB looks overall because of it. Now to be fair, you can option these on the GLA 35 as well, but they just look so good. These are 21 inch multi-spoke design and these ones are finished in matte black. You just don't want to hit a curb with them because they cost $2,000. 
Just a quick backseat overview of the GLB because the two cars are so similar. This has the exact same 38 inches of legroom, but there's one additional inch of headroom at 39 inches. As you can tell from all the light on my face though, this has the optional panoramic sunroof, which is a wonderful feature. It really opens up the cabin. Both cars also have this fun feature which is a household charging outlet. So you can charge your phone, uh, your devices back here, and there are two additional USB-C ports. Let's skip over the infotainment this time around because it's a carbon copy of what we already talked about in the GLA. Let's talk for a second about material quality though, because that's one of the iffier parts, which is rare for us to say about a Mercedes-Benz. Covering the glove box is this hard, scratchy plastic that we're not too fond of, and that actually continues pretty high up on the door panels as well. Then moving on to something a little happier in the cabin is this really cool AMG multifunction steering wheel. You get these big chunky paddles that you find in the more expensive AMG models and it makes this car feel a lot more legit. It is uh, manual telescoping and moving up and down like that, which in a car that's in the $60,000 range, not so sure about that. But it does have these super cool dials at your fingertips to change the drive mode of the car. So you keep it in comfort like that and you crank it all the way over for Sport Plus. I love that it's just right there at your thumbs, ready to do quickly. Over on this side of the wheel, you can control individual parameters of the car, like the suspension right here, the traction control, the gearbox, it works out well. But for the seven million buttons that are on this steering wheel that can basically do everything in the car, there's not a seek track button. You can't just hit one button to change the song. Why is that? In the end, the main differences between these two cars really comes down to a matter of space and price. Behind the second row of the GLB, there's over 10 cubic feet more of cargo space. And remember, there's the option of a third row of seats as well. Pair that with the fact that this car is only $2,000 more expensive to start over the GLA, and we like it a lot more. And that's not even including the part that, I think styling-wise, the GLB is a lot better looking than the GLA. Overall, it's our favorite between the two.